In this lesson, we want to review factoring trinomials using the AC method. So in the last review session, we talked about the simplest case scenario for factoring a trinomial. So that occurs when you have something like AX squared plus BX plus C and A is equal to one. So if I had something like X squared plus let's say five X plus six, we can very easily factor this. We know the first position of each binomial is going to be x, because x times x, the f in FOIL, would give me x squared back. To find this and this, I only need to figure out two integers whose sum is the coefficient of the middle term, so whose sum is 5, and whose product is the final term or the constant term. So give me two integers whose sum is 5 and whose product is 6. Well, I would say 2 and 3. Right, two plus three is five, two times three is six. So this would factor into x plus two and times x plus three. So very, very easy, very simple stuff. In the case where we get something where we can't factor it, we consider it to be prime. So you might see something like x squared plus four x plus seven. If you're asked to factor this, well, when you start the process, this is x and this is x. Give me two integers whose sum is four and whose product is seven. Well, it doesn't exist, right? So you think about seven as seven times one. It's a prime number. There's nothing else you can do. So seven plus one is eight. That doesn't get me to four. So when you get something like that, you can just stop and say that it's a prime polynomial. It cannot be factored using rational numbers. Now, what we're gonna talk about today is the more complex scenario, the scenario that most students hate. And the reason students hate it is because it ends up being a lot more work, right? It's just very, very tedious. So if we have a trinomial such as ax squared plus bx plus c, now a is not going to be equal to 1. So the first part of each binomial is no longer a given because this guy right here is not a 1, okay? So in order to use the AC method, sometimes people refer to it as the grouping method because you end up doing factoring by grouping, we need to understand what A, B, and C represent in a trinomial. So A is always used as the coefficient for the squared variable, so that's why you see AX squared. B is used as the coefficient for the variable raised to the first power, and then C is your constant term. All right, so let's jump in and look at a problem, and I'm just gonna walk you through the process. It's not difficult, it's just something you need to write down and kind of go step by step through. So the very first thing you're gonna do if we have something like 7x squared plus 51x plus 14, you want to identify, again, a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient of the squared variable, b is the coefficient for the variable raised to the first power, and c is going to be your constant term. Now, the very first thing you want to do here is you want to find two integers whose product is a times c. So the product of these two integers is a times c. And then the sum is going to be b, okay? So what is a times c? It's seven times 14, which is gonna be 98. So let me just write 98 here, and the sum is 51. So what you need to do is you need to go through the possibilities. You need to go through the factors of 98. So the pairs of numbers that combine through multiplication to give you 98 and see are there two such integers that would give me a sum of 51 and multiply together to give me 98, okay? So you can start with 1 and 98. That's obviously not going to work, but just for completeness, let's do 1 times 98. So 1 and 98 would not work as a sum, right? Everything's positive here, so we're looking at two positive numbers. 1 plus 98 is 99. You can throw that out. The next thing you would come across is 2 and 49. So 2 times 49 would give me 98, and 2 plus 49 would in fact give me 51. So we can stop here, we've found our two integers. So the integers we're looking for are 2 and 49, okay? So let's erase all of this. All right, so some of you might incorrectly assume that these two integers are used like we did in the last method. I see students all the time get the two integers and go, okay, it's x plus 2 times x plus 49, okay? That's wrong. The two integers are used to expand the middle term, okay? So we're gonna expand the middle term such that we have a four-term polynomial and we can use factoring by grouping. 
So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 7x squared plus 49x, then plus, I'm going to do 2x, then plus 14. Now, in case you lost me there, think about the fact that 49x plus 2x gives you 51x. I didn't do anything illegal, okay? All I did was I took the middle term and I rewrote it using these two integers that we found. And so now we have a four term polynomial, right? We have 7x squared plus 49x plus 2x plus 14. It's the same value, it's the same thing. We're just doing this so that we can use factoring by grouping. All right, so now we want to factor by grouping. So I'm gonna make this first two into a group and the last two into a group. So from the first two, I can clearly pull out a 7x. So inside the parentheses, I would have x plus seven. From the second group, I can pull out a two and inside the parentheses, I would have x plus seven. So if I factor out my common binomial factor here of x plus seven, I'm gonna end up with an answer of x plus seven times, we'll have seven x plus two. So that is the correct factorization of this guy, the seven x squared plus 51 x plus 14. And of course, we're just gonna check it. We don't need to check every one, but I'm gonna check this one just so you can see. So first terms, x times seven x will give me seven x squared. The outer, x times two would be two x. The inner, seven times seven x would be 49 x. So 2x plus 49x would give you that middle term of 51x, and then 7 times 2 would give you 14, okay? So we can see this works itself out. Again, our answer is the quantity x plus 7 times the quantity 7x plus 2. All right, so hopefully you're not too lost. We're going to try another one. We're going to do the same process. Again, just identify what's a, b, and c. So this is a, this is b, this is c, right? a is the coefficient for the squared variable. In this case, it's 6. B is the coefficient for the variable raised to the first power. Here it's 41. C is your constant term. So I want to find two integers whose product is A times C. So product is, again, A times C. In this case, that's 6 times 63, which is 378. And we want a sum of 41, right? A sum of B or 41. So obviously, 1 times 378 would not work. If we divided 378 by two, we get 189. So you'd have 189 and two, that wouldn't work. 378 divided by three is 126, that wouldn't work. 378 divided by six is 63, wouldn't work. 378 divided by seven is 54, that wouldn't work. 378 divided by nine is 42, that also wouldn't work. So then we go to 378 divided by 14, and we get an answer of 27. Now 27 plus 14 is 41. So we found our two integers. Right, we want 27 and 14. 27 times 14, again, would give me 378. 27 plus 14 would give me 41. So let's drag these numbers over here. So again, what am I gonna do with these numbers? I'm gonna use them to expand this middle term. All I'm doing. Very simple process. So we have 6x squared plus, I'm gonna go ahead and write 27x first and then plus 14x, and then plus 63, okay? So nothing illegal here, I just rewrote the middle term, I expanded it so we can now use factoring by grouping. So let's erase this, we don't need that information anymore. From the first group, I can pull out a 3x. So I pull out a 3x, inside the parentheses I would have 2x plus nine. And the second group, I could pull out a seven, Inside the parentheses, I would have 2x plus 9. And I have a common binomial factor of 2x plus 9. Okay, everybody can see that. So if we factor this, we're going to have a 2x plus 9. This quantity multiplied by 3x plus 7. So this is our factorization. We get 2x plus 9. That quantity multiplied by the quantity 3x plus 7. All right, let's take a look at one that has two variables involved. So we have 30x squared minus 39xy minus 27y squared. And again, we're going to approach the problem the same way, even though it has two variables. It's very, very easy. The first thing you would notice here is that everything is divisible by 3, right? 30 is divisible by 3, 39 is divisible by 3, and 27 is divisible by 3. So I can pull the 3 out, right, before we even start. So this would be 10x squared minus 13xy minus 9y squared. So just proceed as you normally would. Inside the parentheses here, again, this is still going to be considered A. This is my B. This is my C. 
So give me two integers whose product is 10 times negative 9 or negative 90. So that's the product. And then for a sum, I want negative 13. So that's my sum. So running through the factors of just 90, you've got 1 times 90, which is 90. That wouldn't work, right? You've got 2 times 45. That wouldn't work. You've got 3 times 30. That wouldn't work. Not divisible by 4. But 90 divided by 5 is 18. Now you can make 5 and 18 work if you play with the signs. If you have a negative 18 and a positive 5, right? If you have a negative 18 and a positive 5. Negative 18 plus 5 is negative 13. Negative 18 times 5 is negative 90. So those are the two integers we're looking for. So let's use that to rewrite the middle term. So we're going to have 3 times the quantity 10x squared. I'm going to put minus 18xy plus 5xy and then minus 9y squared. So you can see this y variable didn't really change anything for us. You use the same technique, the same strategy. Okay. So now I'm just going to factor using grouping. So I have 3 and then inside of parentheses. The first group I can pull out a 2x. That would leave me with 5x minus 9y. From the second group I can pull out a y. That would leave me with 5x minus 9y. So you have a common binomial factor of 5x minus 9y. And if we pull that guy out, you would have three times. You'd have your 5x minus 9y. And then you would have your 2x plus your y. Okay. So this guy factors into 3 times the quantity 5x minus 9y times the quantity 2x plus y. So again, it didn't really affect anything for us to have a second variable involved. It's the same process. Don't get scared if you see two variables. It's very, very simple to work with. It doesn't change anything. The only difference is you have a y here and a y here, right? Because y times y gives you that y squared part, okay? So let's look at one more. And for this one, I gave you one that's a bit tricky. So we have 8x squared minus 5x plus 35. Nothing you can pull out to start, so let's just look at what we need. We need two integers whose product is 8 times 35, which is 280, and whose sum is negative 5. So this is my product, and this is my sum, right, negative 5. So if we think about 280, let's just go ahead and factor it. And I purposely picked big numbers, so you get some practice with some things that are, you know, kind of difficult, kind of tedious. Because a lot of times you're doing these practice problems and they're all small numbers and it takes you seconds to find the answer, right? I want something that's going to take you a little bit of time. So 280 is what? It's 28 times 10. 10 is 5 times 2. 28 is 4 times 7. 4 is 2 times 2. Okay? So we can have 1 times 280. We can have 2 times 140. We can have 4 times 70. We can have 5 times 56. We can have 7 times 40. We can have 8 times 35. We can obviously have 10 times 28. You can have 14 times 20. And that's pretty much going to be it. Now, what you're looking for here, if the product is 280, positive 280, you would need two integers that both were negative, right? Because you have a negative sum. So two negatives would make a positive in terms of being multiplied together. And two negatives, if they were added together, would give you a negative sum. So that's what you would need. But if you look through this list here, nothing would work, right? So sometimes you get an example where it's prime. And it takes more time because you have to go through all the factors, right, all the pairs, and see, does anything work? Well, this wouldn't work, 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 wouldn't work, wouldn't work, wouldn't work. Wouldn't work. So we can go ahead and just say this is a prime polynomial. 